a, a gunpowder storage magazine uh, where you know barrels of gunpowder were stored in here. But apart from that, there's very, very little information on the use. We can't actually identify what's actually been used in this place apart from the actual gunpowder storage. You can actually see some barrels marked on the floor down there on the concrete itself. That we do believe was from the Second World War era where they used to bring um, different type of barrels in here. Um, this was uh, quite a scary experience actually, um, which is interesting because it's such a, such a tiny place. I'm confused. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Okay, let's do yeah. that. Is there something about Brian that you like? No. Do you want to use Samantha's energy? Do you want to use Samantha to communicate? Got such a quick action. Arms. 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 I heard that. It's feeding off my energy field. What are you doing to Samantha? Stop. Did you mention the word tired? Were you tired of something? Often. 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 This is what this energy does. It keeps its distance. It evades, doesn't it? He dips in and out. He dips in and out. He knows exactly what he's doing. Do you want help in any way? In? Toby. Toby. Is it Lee's turn now? Is it, oh, least, is it least turn now? So I was aware when they were opening themselves up in these environments that spirit can get very, very angry and that's exactly what happened. When I let this energy in, he was furious. He was furious we were there. He was furious we were on his territory. He was furious that I was going to get the truth out of exactly what had happened. There was a voice there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there was a voice. Thank you. Parking lot, there was a voice. Come on, what are you going to use all this energy for? You're collecting off me and Lee. I'm feeling vortex in this. I know you're vortexing the energy through these two. We're going to move it. Let's get it moved. Yeah. Come on, knock this out of my hand. If you're here, just knock this out of my hand. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be nice for you to be able to use all this energy that you have and move something for us or not hey, somebody help. in the group? The evidence caught in, in the magazine was more physical. It was more physical for Sam, it was more physical for the people there. Again, I uh, was affected quite badly when I was in the magazine, but it was actually Sam herself who had the weirdest experience. That, that was really, really scary. Do you feel that only men should be here? Men. 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 So you don't want any women here present to start with? No. 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 Affecting it in the slightest. Just make this light, right? Light up all the way to red. Just step in front of this little black device. My hands on now, but it's... Um, bypassing this... Uh, has most of the... Poltergeist activity being in the other room. It has been in the other room, that's where we experienced it, yeah. Should we move in there? Might be a good idea. Definitely. Yeah? yeah. Should we go? Okay, that's okay. I've actually witnessed the poltergeist activity actually in the magazine personally, um, but I was hoping that it would actually sort of repeat it on the night, but it actually didn't. The only things that got moved on the night was when Sam actually started channeling this again, this really negative entity. <laughs>
thoughts, don't you? You were in yeah. control. Yeah, yeah I know. There was an incident where um, Sam was, I think, channeling a person. And at this point, we weren't really recording anything with our devices or anything. We were just listening to what she was doing. And it, it seems like the person who came through wasn't really very happy with some of the folks that were there, um, possibly the men in uniforms. And at one point, I'm not sure what happened. She, she, she went berserk and she, she chased them and um, moved around the place and I wasn't quite sure where to stand or where to go, what to do. Do something. You need to move that hand. Um, move move to what? Suddenly, like, mm -hmm. and it will just, oh my God. What? Do you not like those men in those uniforms? And I, I came into her line of sight at one point and she was holding a candle and I didn't see Samantha. I saw something completely different. It was like fight or flight um, took over me. And I, I didn't quite see the person anymore. I saw something almost behind the eyes, a kind of, a kind of um, expression I'd never before seen from, from this woman. like to two of the reenactors that were there dressed in uniform and the next thing I remember was just Sam just took off she tried to lift the table that was like must have been three times her size and chuck it at them and um, then she chased them down a corridor which we followed she then picked the, uh, a really really large candle up and again the look in Sam's eyes I've never seen that before she was she was a different person and um, so we didn't quite get par uh, poltergeist activity, but we, we kind of got attachment activity, which to me is just as impressive. I felt that before we started. I, I felt it in another room. I knew I needed protection, Jesus, but that was something else. It would have gone right in my room and it would have been very, very difficult to shift him. Not much group. As his, ang as his energy got stronger, and I let it in, that was when he started to show his, his true colours and his personality. And from what I remember, um, yeah, he was attacking some of the crew and the crew were very affected and I was chasing some of the, uh, some of the crew around, um, which for me, being five foot two, suddenly taking and transforming the physique of a man very, very big, that was astonishing. And I think both Lee and Brian uh, experienced that and were very, very scared to see that spirit, well, poltergeist spirit, can affect us in that way, but he was furious. He didn't want us there at all. Sam's taking a break outside, and we're trying something different. And the idea is that it'll, it'll shift through one station every quarter of a second, and it'll go through many of them. And using this, we'll not only be able to hear um, people's voices, but we'll be able to identify gender, um, intent, and all of that kind of thing, because it'll be a legitimate voice. It's not guaranteed to work. We've got a couple of light objects as well, just Absolutely, in case. Absolutely, yeah. Because we know that this place is, uh, is subject to poltergeist activity. We haven't seen any yet. We would have liked to, and uh, we are still hopeful. Well, we'll just step away from them at the moment, and we'll just turn the spirit box on. We've got two EMF detectors aiming in different directions, but towards the center of the table. Um, Hopefully, if either of these two cups move, with any luck, we may get a, a little spike. Actually, if we turn them that way, yeah. it'll be harder to move by accident, like that. Okay, we've also got a digital recorder as well that's gonna record everything that we do um, independently. And also, around on this side, we have Microsoft Connect hooked up to this laptop. So what that's gonna do is that is filming the area directly where the table is. And you'll notice two human forms are already mapped. 
me, the other one's me. And this one, well this one I think is Louis behind me. So what this hopefully will do is if anything pops into its field of vision, it'll map a human form. So we have a lot of different experiments going on at the same time. And the idea really is to get as much evidence for one occurrence as possible. I had great expectations from Flat Bastion magazine. I thought to myself, if we're going to get any uh, visual sightings, it's going to be here. If we're going to get anything being moved about, it's here. Uh, so we really tried. Uh, and perhaps uh, these things never happen when you want them to. Okay, if there's any spirit that wants to communicate with us, wants to say anything, You've got the box there that's making the sound. Use that to communicate with us. Just a simple hello to start off with. Anything that you want to or can. We didn't actually catch a lot of audio or K2 or even echo box. Is there anybody in this room with us? Yeah. Hitler was mentioned. Uh, I'm not sure why, considering Hitler didn't really come close to the rock. But again, you know, people who were fighting against him, some of them would have died here knowing what was going on. They may have died in service or, or, or things like those. So it was unexpected, but I wouldn't quite say entirely surprising, considering what Gibraltar is. Hitler. Do you like being with Lee? Did you realize that this isn't your rightful body, Frank? There was something. You do realize this isn't your rightful body, Frank? How long have you been with Lee? Dead. I know. Spirit dead. How long have you been with Lee? I know. How long have you been with Lee? Since he was eight? That would match. Because... Nine. 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 Nine years old. Thank you. And when Kieran did the round and he came to me and, and he said yes, it just brought back that surge of feeling again, of emotion. That I really don't know where it comes from. And um, for Sam and Kieran and, and for it to come through the machine that... It, kind of attached when I was eight or nine makes sense because that was a time of my life where I was very young but you know uh, young people they, they tend to be I guess plagued a little more often by by these these kind of entities because we're more impressionable more psychically open I guess and uh, I, I um, would frequently sleep terrified uh, there was an area of my house that I was dreading going to and uh, it, it wasn't a very good place for me really so to hear, to hear this kind of link up, um, even coming through the echo box as it has, is, it kind of makes sense. These natural walls are thousands of years old and they hold some pretty dark secrets. Next week on the Ghost Trail, we'll be going to some of the more mysterious and lesser known parts of St. Michael's Cave.